Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Nomadland. We had a lovely drive today from the valley. An hour in traffic, listening to a bunch of uh, old songs from my childhood, you know, like a oh, bunch of old Metallica. Aerosmith. Like what? Uh. Metallica, Aerosmith. Yeah. Slip of one Bon Jovi in there, don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's this? Living on a prayer. Um, yeah. And I, got I like this intro you're doing, by the way. We usually don't talk about how our day went. Yeah. We're yeah. evolving. I feel good about it. I mean, this is a good, you know, ritual to do before. I like it. The podcast, listen to some good music for an hour. And possibly know. it's because we're in front of one of the podcast kings himself. His name is Aaron. I'll let him introduce himself. Um, let's do that from now on, right? I don't like introducing <laughs> yeah. people. It's weird. <laughs> yeah. You know, it feels like David best, Letterman yeah. type If they shit. forget something, we could, you know, yeah. talk about it. But uh, I'll let him uh, introduce himself. But uh, as far as me, I've been a fan for not so long because I haven't known him for a long time. But I'm super excited to have him on the show. He's uh, Why is the music still on? <laughs> I like it. I thought you were going to do the whole thing. I'm like, let's do it. Live Fuck, music. I'll get my shit but, uh, out. Aaron, you're not supposed to talk until we... Oh, oh my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We got, let's my start bad. over. My bad. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, he's... Uh, if you ask me wh who's and what is my favorite type of people, they are the people that are on the spiritual side, but they're on the physical side, and they care about their mind, body, spirit. They have that ego. They're proud of the ego, and they're not just so one-dimensionally stuck into one thing. And Aaron, to me, is one of those people. Um, I love him for that, and uh, it's such an honor to have him on the show. Welcome to the show. Thank you, man. Welcome to the show. Welcome. Thank you, guys. I love that you lead with, this guy is egotistical. <laughs> Welcome to me. <laughs> That's what you heard. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> Thank you, guys. This is beautiful. Thank you, man. This is rad. I I'm excited to keep on learning, following your guys' journey. This is gorgeous. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, thanks excited. for having me. Tell the, tell the listeners a little bit about yourself. Mm. Uh, so relevance in this this frame would be uh, so I'm a movement coach. Yeah. Yeah. So I help I help people to start embodying themselves, start start re-empowering themselves in the way that they move through the world, okay. Okay. and understanding what the hell it means to move in the first place. Yeah. So I do that via you know teaching seminars. I do that via I'm, I'm writing a book right now, which is which is kind of exciting. We just signed with the publisher mm -hmm. this week, Heard about so that's that. kind of that's like you went to New, New York news. For that, right? This. Yeah, yeah just got that. back to the whole thing. So you went and visited all the major publishers and went down with like my posse and met with their posses mm -hmm. and did the whole whole thing and, and end up being a really successful mission. Yeah. Sweet. Super exciting. So that's really exciting. That's coming up in the next like year or so. Uh, but yeah, educating people and working on empowering people to, to uh, become more autonomous with mm -hmm. the way that they take care of themselves. We said by move, you mean just like so you're not stuck in the same place, improving? Yeah, man. Yeah, our yeah. world, our world, we live, whether we realize it or not, we're in a mold, right? So the mold looks a lot like hunching over, staring into a cell phone. Then you get in your car and you're hunched mm -hmm. over the wheel. You're in a bucket seat. Then you got the bus and the train. And, you know, mm -hmm. so throughout the whole entire day, so physically move. That's okay. physically, yeah, uh, we're l physically living in this structural mold. So our modern world has this idea that modern erect man wants to be more of like a fetal position. Mm -hmm. So we build ourselves into this fetal position, and then you see depression becoming that's that's the the number one leading cause of disability worldwide. Depression, and, so, and obviously, I mean, if you say physical, but they they all connect at the end. It's of all the, the day, same right? thing, man. It's all the same thing. Yeah. Uh, but as far as movement, and let's kind of like start with that yeah um it's become a huge thing especially in the world of ufc right i mean they're starting yeah. to realize how important that is is it still does it still have the same hype it had movement yes oh so you're with saying the like movement the coaches in particular yeah right it's like so so movement is becoming Ido portal was a guy that i think is really popularized that right. idea of like movement movement culture and all that yes. so you know kudos to him for really being like a, a spear Correct. in that getting people excited of, of like like my, the hashtag thing that i use is like move different i think he was a big part of getting people excited about that yes. idea of moving different uh -huh. and maybe this idea of the way that we move in, in a gym and like the traditional bodybuilding stuff yes. isolating you know Know, breaking down myopically all these individual parts and then just hoping that it's going to work uh -huh. yeah you know like the body doesn't work that way right so when you try to isolate you know all of the muscles 400 odd muscles break it down into one or, or break it down in individual parts the body doesn't know how to put that back together mm -hmm. you have to at some point put all the parts back together i see yeah do it in unison and somehow and you've always yeah. been fascinated with this yeah yeah so i got into bodybuilding at a young age and started tearing myself apart okay you know and so that was How like 
like 14 years old. So my dad started smoking crack and like all sorts of weird stuff started happening in my house. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the story that I kind of relate that to is that I padded myself with muscle. Mm. I think that people do that all the time. You know, you pat yeah, ourselves with, with money or watches or cars or muscle or intellect. <clears throat> You know, so I just I chose muscle because that was what I had access to. Mm -hmm. So I like juiced up on creatine and like all the supplements, and it was like poof. And it seemed I'm rewarding safe. too at the time. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, it felt so, yeah. People, people are applauding you for people it. Look at you. Same way you get applauded for making lots of money. Same way you get applauded for like power. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, so in L.A., there's more. It's a lot of that like you call it like third chakra kind of stuff, like that like mm -hmm. feeding the power part of yourself. You know, yeah. but it's really important to kind of balance balance the whole yeah and it's something you can see i mean anybody maybe people will know if you're rich or not when they just see you at first you know but you know they can tell you if you're in good shape so you probably get a lot more compliments and a lot more conversation yeah. about it yeah. yeah we're all just animals man we're all just hunting mm -hmm. you know but now but instead of hunting an antelope or a woolly mammoth or whatever now we're hunting money you know yeah. and women and it's totally fine mm -hmm. i think it's great to hunt be a great hunter like come back with a fucking woolly mammoth like slung over your shoulder like raw like you did it like that's yeah. cool yeah you know but along with that like there's more to life than just you know killing animals yeah <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of great replacements and you've learned that the hard way because look when i look at you i see someone that yeah obviously you care about the body so much but you're you're just so interested in the other stuff as well right yeah and you weren't always like that yeah so it, it so my body started kind of like exploding like like breaking down on me in a sense so i started dislocating my both my shoulders dislocated Whoa. like more times than i can count at dislocated my ankle uh, first was playing ice hockey at like age probably 15, 16. Whoa. And so I was huge. Like I, so I put on, I put on something like 60 pounds in a matter of like a year and a half or wow. I don't know exactly wow. what it was, but like a lot of weight real quick. Yeah. And, uh, you know, puberty obviously had a big part to do with that, okay. but huge transition. And my body's like, what's happening? And I was so <laughs> focused on, you know, the beach muscles. Yes. So this is, I mean, this is most people. You know, this is this is like if you go into any gym, it's like I'm working out my abs, working out my biceps, working out my pecs, maybe yeah. a little bit in the booty because I want to I want to have a booty, which is like, you know, I'm glad that people are at least thinking about their butts. That's I wasn't. Right. I just want to <laughs> boof. What do I what do I see when I look in the mirror? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then that pulls the whole tensegrity, the mm. balance of your whole body out of whack. And then you go to whatever you could fucking trip on a on a you know, a pencil and you, you slip a little bit and all of a sudden, yeah. boom, yeah. and then you pop. But if you have that balance, then all of a sudden you're kind of, you're, you're more of like an adaptation mm. organism. Any funny thing happens, your body's so intelligent. You have yeah. so much proprioception. You know how to fall and you handle it better when you do. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So that's yeah. what I'm more interested in these days. How do we, how do we learn to adapt to a wide variety of situations? Well, well, back yeah. to my I've... question. I'm just interested in what made you interested. <clears throat> yeah. Mm, oh, because Be that was because the thing. People, it's because I blew my people... I blew myself up. Okay. So I was healing myself. All right. Yeah. And yeah. Through that's the... healing. That's how you got into everything else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. I'm still healing, man. I still got stuff. We all do. You know, it's an ongoing thing. I don't think we ever like stop evolving. No. Like we're right in the thick of it. Mm -hmm. People are going to be talking or whatever. You know, humanoids will be talking about us maybe thousands of years, being like, oh, I remember the time. You know, Homo yeah. sapien, man, they were like way behind. <laughs> yeah, that's, right. yeah. that's funny. But I was thinking, um, I'm not doing what you're doing, definitely. I'm doing the opposite <laughs> with my buddy. But, um, you know, you live in Santa Monica, you know the birds. So we've been riding on those in oh, the yeah, past yeah. Like, the few weeks with my friends and just like, I'm getting really ballsy. I'm doing like crazy shit. I'm doing jumps and stuff, you know. Good. And um, <laughs> like, a couple of times I was about to eat shit so hard and I knew if I would have fell, I would have fucked myself up, you know. But yeah. it's like, so most people when they get injuries it's it's years in the making mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you have the injury and you're like oh man i shouldn't have wiped my ass that direction <laughs> like dude it had nothing to do <laughs> with, with the geometry of you wiping yeah. yourself like it was you're preparing you've been, to, fuck, you've your been preparing up. to yeah. fuck yourself up you know so if we could think about this idea of prehab as opposed to always just being stuck up in rehab mm -hmm. um you know it's a better world Cool. Makes life easier. Yeah. So then, got to get on that. At what point did you realize that there is a connection between the physical alignment and the spiritual alignment? Mm. Well, I think that, yeah, it's something I'm still ongoing feeling. You know, I'm still exploring it. And you're taking people on your journey. Yeah. Yeah. Which is beautiful. Yeah. Dance is a big one with that, man. Or, or like, or like any type of like improvisation. Mm. 
you know? So if you like, like method acting, like learning how to really take on an emotion for you to be able to do that, you have to take it on through your whole entire body. Yeah. You know? And so that's what we're doing. You Anytime, do that? You do a lot of that? I do a lot of dance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What yeah. So, so, uh, so ballet is something that I've studied a bit. I've, mm -hmm. I've been in a couple like really small ballet performances and, it's um, a tough sport, yeah. it's cool. It yeah. It's, 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 like, it's tremendous. <clears throat> yeah. It's been, it, yeah. And it's really challenging in people's mm -hmm. bodies too. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I think it has, actually does offer a really strong yeah, foundation. Yeah. There's a couple little funny things with like the, the huge turnout and all that stuff that I don't really mm -hmm. recommend for people. Um, yeah. But yeah, so with dance or acting, oh, a.k.a. a job interview, mm -hmm. a.k.a. speaking to a new random yeah. person in the street, yeah. doing a podcast with somebody you never met before, mm -hmm. you know, all of that, you're acting through your body, mm -hmm. through your whole self. And it's not just your words. We don't actually care about the words that much. Yeah. There's a guy, there's a guy, I think it was Alfred Morabian. I'm pretty sure Alfred Morabian. We'll look it up. Um, it was 55% of our conversations come from body language, the way that we move, the color of our skin. Mm -hmm. So I see his hair standing up. I see he's blushing. Yeah. That's how we communicate. And there's 38% is from the tonality, mm -hmm. right? So if I'm speaking from this voice it's kind of like lower mm -hmm. yeah, i'm talking a little bit actually speedier right now which will probably make people distrust a little bit more mm -hmm. so maybe i should slow it down a little slow bit down. we'll yeah. do it right? yeah yeah don't worry about, <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't worry about it <laughs> yeah. no but really and the that's, words no, yeah, but, the words have the least amount of impact basically body language yeah. and the tonality so you slow yeah. it you slow it down a little bit you go into depth right and then people are like oh i think he knows what he's talking about <laughs> right and then and then from what morabian says only seven percent of our actual conversation is the words the that words, we're speaking exactly Right. So if someone starts like if someone's lying to you, right, they might be saying they might nod their head in a different direction than what they're actually mm -hmm. saying. Mm -hmm. Right. Their hips might start facing the door. Right. Their eyes might start looking away from those are all physical reactions. Yeah, yeah. You it's like your deep primate, like deep mammalian brain saying like, I'm lying. <laughs> I <can't." laughs> let's, let's, let's doctor. Actually, I saw you. he had someone on his podcast. Actually, I really like that episode. Was it Dr. <laughs> Elvick or something? The guy that oh, like, studied the people, uh, the fa know. facial expressions. Oh, Paul of Ekman. Ekman. I said, Ekman. Every, every name I said most cited psychologist yeah, in, in the crazy. world. Like one, of like, said, like, one of like 50 is like one of the most influential people in the yeah, world of psychology. Yeah. He found like there's 10,000 different, you know, um, facial expressions. Facial expressions that you can have. And he studied it in the Pepe New Guinea for yeah. a long time. Yeah, he cataloged every guy. single one. Yeah. He practiced and cataloged yeah. every single one. Really proud guy too. Like looks like I'll be responsible for this. I don't yeah, know yeah, I noticed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, I'm the shit. So did you find the same thing? Like for example, you're talking about <laughs> facial reaction, and you know how you tell people to smile, and naturally they're going to become happier. Yeah. yeah, that that's what they talk about usually. And have you found like through being in alignment of some sort for happiness mm -hmm. or I don't know joy to somehow come through just having the right posture for example like in yoga you have the mula bun which you gotta kind of lock in your uh, the root chakra right yeah. you gotta sit up straight that does something it allows the subtle energy to flow better yeah and then you have the locks in your neck and then you have the locks in your diaphragm and then you can do it all together and you can notice how energy goes up and down yeah. so through your work do you kind of implement any of that and have noticed anything through yeah, the right posture sure, yeah. becoming more awakened yeah mm -hmm. absolutely well so something that as you're saying that in like acro yoga and like picking people up over your head and doing, you know, or yeah. gymnastic cheerleading, anything like that, uh -huh. they say a tight body is a light body, right? So if you can really what? Mm. tighten everything up, you know, and bring everything as close to the midline, right? As close to like that axial, like, uh -huh. whoop, like straight mm. line through all of a sudden the lighter and more athletic and more effective at whatever the hell you're doing, you become mm -hmm. right. When the body starts to oh, starts to like <laughs> loosen up and spin out, that's when try to throw. That's why drunk people it's hard. They're hard to carry, right? When <laughs> right. Like, exactly. You know, coffee. It could be like yeah. ten times heavier. Yeah. Like, yeah. What is that example? Right. <laughs> it's true. Like, no, when people truth. pass out. No, no, it's actually like. like no, that's it's, true. It's not from partying experience. It's from um, <laughs> like when people pass out when they like get, you know get knocked out when they you know get KO'd or when they get, get in a car accident and get knocked out. They're really harder to carry. That's you know? true. So, yeah. And yeah, that's, that's such a beautiful point too because I'm I'm on this side of saying like you know a line and tight body is light body, but then also being able to go totally loose. You know, a flaccid body has a lot of value as well. Mm. Right, it's because for, yeah. because what if you get in a car accident? Exactly. Right, it's everybody's everybody's fire. heard this millions of times. Mm. Where if a person gets in a car accident, That's if right. they're drunk, they're like, "Why is a drunk guy always all right?" Everybody yeah. else gets their <laughs> head torn off. Yeah, you're like, "Well, he's loose." Yeah, 
He doesn't know what's up. Yeah, fuck it. But the other guy gets the adrenaline. Like, freezes up. And fucking next. Same thing with a lot of people that are like tremendous skateboarders, like mm. X Games athletes or whatever. A lot of times they're the most unassuming people. Like you could be a professional snowboarder, like crush, mm-hmm. you know, with like the, the way that your body is. I wouldn't totally. be surprised at all if you were like a sick skater, mm-hmm. you know, or something like that. Pretty good. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I believe it. No, I believe it. I, I, I would be like absolutely zero well, percent surprised. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So it's that looseness, the ability to really find that, like, you know, create that torque through the bike because you're loose enough to really like mm-hmm. snap it. Whereas you get a big, stiff, muscle bound guy, they're not able to create any of that more like delicate movement. I can imagine, man. Like you see a big guy be on, on a bird and they just go in a tree and just like fuck themselves up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how many times we can refer back to birds in this. <laughs> well, this dude, real like, I'm probably going to keep mentioning so it. Time. It's like a big part of my life for the past two weeks. Like, <laughs> every break that we get, we go on a bird. But anyway. That's good, man. Yeah. So it's about basically aligning the intelligence of the body with the intelligence of the mind and the intelligence of the spirit, I would imagine, right? That's yeah. Like, it's important because that's one of the things I'm, I'm trying to do in therapy too. And, it's for somebody to truly be able to have that awareness of their mind and body you can get them to say get into a shameful posture and they go like this and Mm -hmm. now get out of it and they go out and by going in and out they start noticing the difference which naturally brings a certain awareness so the mind gets smart the subconscious mind gets smart and all of a sudden you're aware of okay when you go like this you're sad when you go like that you're happy yeah so it's a signal to your mind to stay happy yeah Mm -hmm. so you're helping people with that and like Tell me a little bit more, because I'm very fascinated with the connection of these two, and I feel like we're just kind of like uh, on the tip of everything right now. We, there's still so much that we need to learn about the connection be- between these two. Yeah, right. I'm realizing as you're saying that earlier, I said 400 odd muscles, 640 muscles is the amount of muscles in the body, but it varies depending upon person to person. Okay. So mm. sorry about that. It's okay. We gotta edit that. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I think that the say the question one more time, not the not the whole thing. Not the whole thing, but basically, what I'm I'm trying to find out is how do you bring awareness to things outside of the? How do you make people happy with with doing what you do? Hmm. Confidence is such a big thing, man. Yeah. You know, so if you are going, so for one thing, like think if anybody listening has ever like tried to do like a meditation, a seated meditation. Right. You know, if you have that nagging pain in your spine or your neck or your hips, whatever, all of a sudden you have this, it's like you have this siren going Mm -hmm. off. You're trying to find silence. Right. You're trying to find connection Mm -hmm. and you feel well in your body and there's just this going off the whole time. Yeah. It throws off the whole vibe. Yeah. You know, now all of a sudden your life just becomes like you're inside this, you know, this, this, this siren, you know, Mm -hmm. so if we can start to bring like the tight body is the light body, you know, if we can start to bring this body into alignment, you don't feel the body. You know, the body is almost like, it's almost like in the way of us getting Mm -hmm. to a deeper level of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right, you know, so you effortless kind of like yeah. So you so people seek out out of body experiences, Mm. right? Because their body's in pain, Mm. (laughs) and vice versa, right? Because one time you mentioned that you fixed your back pain through doing the other other type of work. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So DMT. Okay. Yeah, that was. Do you guys talk about stuff like that? Yeah, of course. Oh, perfect. Um, Look at this. Yeah. Oh, look at you. That's beautiful. Uh, yeah. yeah, so so uh f- yeah, five MEO DMT. I had a really um I've had I've had a handful of experiences with experiences with it. But um one of them was pretty have you guys experienced this? No, I want to. Okay. Yeah, pretty some. fascinating stuff, man. Uh, but one of them for one thing, and this is I'm gonna, you know, officially sound like a crazy person, but it feels like there is some entity of sorts working with you during mm. it. Have you guys used much like mushrooms or yeah, any kind of like ayahuasca or anything like that? Not ayahuasca yet, but that's in the plans. Yeah. Yeah. So so with that, there's certain psychoactive substances that I've used that I didn't feel as strongly like as though there was mm. seriously like this teacher that was like all right, Aaron, here we go. Mm. You know, with, with 5-MeO-DMT, that was like, that really was, was kind of a sensation. And it literally was guiding my spine into, um, it felt like unwinding That's crazy. previous patterns of, of, you know, trauma, shit, whatever, mm. you know, whatever language you would want to put on it. It's not like it just like, whoosh, like yeah. unlocked everything. But, you know, they talk about Kundalini. Kundalini, you know, it's just all these, these things that we've heard for thousands of years you know, and they'll kind of they'll kind of peek up into science. But like, oh wow, that's kind of like, mm. you know. So Kundalini is this this spiral, kind of rotational energy that goes up from your sacrum all the way to the top of your head, mm-hmm. right? And so with when doing that, I f- 
literally felt some form of sensation of this like spiral thing i'm like oh interesting it's kind of like maybe what they were talking about you know i had that that's the crazy (laughs) i had a i had a i had a kundalini experience full on on um it wasn't full on but spontaneous yeah yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, on mdma one time yeah i'll get it with meditation really strong it came all the way like uh, around my spine and into my brain what did it feel so did your body move or you just feel internally or what no just internally i didn't really move but i felt like uh it felt like uh the electricity kind of like going oh, cool. around my spine and then coming all the way to my brain and you know it's just like and it just how were you bliss. seated while while that was happening were you i was just actually like, standing up but i was oh, like good. not like in the same spot for like two hours with yeah. my eyes closed yeah so, yeah that was, <laughs> rad yeah yeah so stuff like that it's 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 like anything man i used to be so skeptical of everything like if something wasn't like measurable inside of a beaker like i just didn't give it a seems shit like you still carry that cynical healthy cynical view on things as well yeah it's like yeah prove me wrong yeah and then all yeah. of a sudden you feel some some spiral kundalini coming up your ass up the top <laughs> of your head and you're like oh yeah. all right well i don't know what that was but it sounds a lot like what the books from yeah. thousands of years ago were saying so mm-hmm. maybe there's something to a lot of these Aren't conversations you fast like this is one of the things that's crazy to me how this is not common knowledge he didn't even know he had it, right? I'm telling him, trying to explain to him what a kundalini experience is. Halfway, he stops me and finishes it. And he's like, is it this? I'm like, yeah, that's, you had it? He's like, yeah. yeah. He's like, but I, I haven't told anybody because I didn't even know it's a thing. Right. And then, mm. you know, in college, like you tell your professors, psychology professors. And yeah. They're like, what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah. Alan Watts talks about, he says, like, we have philo- philosophy teachers, they come and they, they, they do philosophy. He's like, it's like they'd rather be wearing, like, a white coat as they do philosophy, as mm-hmm. opposed to, like, eating the, you know, the red pill and, like, like getting into getting it. deep, yeah. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, so sometimes I think it's it's really important to, to like, get your face out of the books, you know, get your face out of the, that's what, and why just you go do have it's experiences. So important. It's important for people that look like you and without the white coat or whatnot, and yeah. just move in the body to show that, no man, you know, it's not yeah. all just hippie yeah. language. Yeah. yeah. But you need I, both. You need, both. you really need both. Yeah. You know, so the scientific flashlight is limited because it shines on a specific range mm-hmm. and then, it, and then it, it lights that part up. Right. So it's like the story of the guy that's looking for his keys and he's only looking where the where the light is shining down. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, why are you looking over there? It's like you you didn't leave it over there. It's like, I know, but that's where the light's at. That's right. You know, and yeah. so that's what science does. It shines on a specific thing and it also seeks out answers. It tries to prove itself. That's right. You know, so a lot of the studies that we see, the the Lancet, you know, it said that over fifty percent of scientific studies are are not conducted correctly. They're yeah. basically like, you know, eh, probably not. Don't trust like half of them. I feel like when like modern science, like when Western science kind of like, right? When modern Western science kind of took over, um, you know, they kind of had a pretty pretty big leap. Yeah, and they kind of just said like, okay, that old shit, like you know, fuck that old. Yeah, Eastern science and a lot of stuff got forgotten, you know. And but it's then, back now. but then I think science is so important as course, well because it validates course. some of these 100%. other. But oh. the, but the thing is, like I I I, I kind of feel like science is almost like it's it's like measuring the smoke, hmm. you know. So the you know so the the, the bank robbery happens and they yeah, like go out yeah. into the into the into the sunset and then you see all this smoke and you see the tracks. You know, and you're like, okay, cool. I think it was like, yeah. uh, maybe it was like a, a bear and it was going up. And it, you know, and you're trying to put these pieces together. Yeah. You know, but you're looking at this this image from the past. Mm-hmm. You know, whereas then there's some other people that, you know, I have more interest in maybe like, no, I want to rob the bank. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like, I, like, put me in the car, like, give me the Tommy gun. Like, I want to I want to be a part of the mission. Yeah. And those are the, the people that I are yeah. you if know, I said, having I mean, this If I had to choose one, I would still go with science. Like, for sure, if I had, like, one choice. Because I feel like... It's like a safer you know, one. Yeah, exactly. But it, feel, it feels safer. I don't think so. But usually I safer decisions are yeah. the most dangerous. Yeah, but I'm completely open to, you know, learning about other things with no judgment and experiencing them to see if it's true or not. Yeah. You know? But, yeah. Yeah. I mean, science, science is as much an allude... Well, science is like an agreement. You know, it's like, like what we agree on with within the scientific lens, like the definition, it's it's continually disproving itself. Yeah. You know, so any type of fact or law or something that we know, it's we know it because it hasn't been disproven yet. Yeah. But the moment that it becomes disproven, all of a sudden, like, oh, that hypothesis is yeah. off. Mm. But, you know, the scientific, <laughs> the, the scientific community in general, like, it's always been like that from the times, you know, from Galileo and, and the Renaissance. And there's always like. 
the major people went against a lot of things that were true. They just like no, like because they're you know like cause if it's the main consensus, uh, general consensus, they will go against it. You know, and it will take a lot of time sure. for the new thing to be proven. Mm. Um, so I think I have a problem with that. But I guess that's again part of science that over time it will you know. Yeah, you don't want to, and that's that's where it's like a slippery thing. And like religion does that as well, where a lot of people if you start talking to them about their religion, all of a sudden they might mm -hmm. get really defensive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you're defensive, that means you're insecure, you know? Mm -hmm. So like there's some seed of insecurity there that you're protecting the castle because you know that the walls could potentially crumble. Yeah. Yeah. You have, you to know, so you're like, Oh, get, yeah. get honey, get the gun. <laughs> They're talking about whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and like yeah. just replace that accent over. Any you have to be able to have that dialogue, you know, if it, I mean, if you have the confidence, like you said, if not insecure about it and you know, yeah, anyway. you need the chaos and the order, and I would imagine like the science yeah. and the spirit is a mixture of both, which mm -hmm. creates that beautiful thing that we're looking for. Yeah. Think about think about if you base your whole life around a specific belief system, and then all of a sudden you start you get brought some evidence that disproves yeah. what you've invested yourself into for the last forty years. Yeah. Especially if you're that, like, like, you're, you're you're like everything you can it. do to kill that idea, yeah. it's psychologically, it's like easier. Yeah. You're like, how much longer am I going to have this body? Eh, maybe 45 yeah. years? Yeah. How long is it going to take me to unwind this shit? <laughs> uh, maybe 15? Yeah. Fuck it. I'm going to keep on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially if your afterlife depends on it, you know, it becomes even more important. Yeah. So, so um, are you open to talk a little bit more in detail about your DMT experience? <laughs> yeah, of course. I wish you would have given me a strong no. Like no. No. No, I don't I don't talk about <laughs> DMT. So as a smoker, the you, you smoke it, right? Yeah. Two or three hits. Yeah. Uh I did so I did it. I'm gonna probably cough again on this this uh tequila I'm drinking here. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's water. It's fancy water Watch too. Mountain, Mountain Valley, like no big deal. Sure gonna prove. Yeah, the cool yeah, glasses, exactly. cool water. Whole, yeah, whole yeah, yeah, exactly. Water. Yeah, whole whole foods water, yeah. <laughs> Pretentious water. Um so yeah, so a big thing with using any type of substance like that, not that I'm any like, you know, shaman guru just because I live in Venice. I actually live in Santa <laughs> Just Monica. the way you said guru. Like, yeah. you can't be any more Western. Yeah. Than yeah. The guru, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, good point. <laughs> guru. I am the, I am the guru. guru. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah, but within that, because I do live in Venice, so I have some authority on such, such conversations. <laughs> um, but within that, I think something that is really important uh, the difference between using something like that and using a lot of the stuff that we'll use as like kids, you mm -hmm. know, you'll find like a bag of mushrooms or something like that. You're like, cool, sweet. You know, go to a party. You're yeah. just being the, the first really bad trip I had uh, with mushrooms. We ate like an eighth of mushrooms when I was like probably 15 or something like that. And we're driving around my friend's car and it was rainy outside. And like one of the kids in the car dealt with like depression and shit. And I'm like, I'm feeling into empathy you know, in the deepest way that I had before, I'm like 15 years old and all of a sudden like, oh, I'm having like, I'm getting dark, you know, and I'm feeling cause like depression and anxiety and, You're you know, suicide. Yeah. Like that's a thing. People, like there's how many people are killing themselves as we're having this conversation. I don't know, but certainly a few, Yeah, you know, like that's a real sensation that people are feeling oh, like deep, deep, deep. Yeah. You know, and so when you're doing some type of, you know, ceremony like that in quotations, it really should be a ceremony. Yeah. Not in quotations. Mm. <laughs> no, yeah, I should like, yeah, like prepare yeah. before, get ready. Yeah, set and setting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, set and setting what it's all about. People. Yeah. Yeah, so the set sets your, your mindset and the setting is the place that you're at. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you have that, those two factors in order, then all of a sudden, you're setting the stage for a really beautiful experience. Yeah, I was talking more of the inward experience. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just got sidetracked. The inward experience. <laughs> um, this is like the, you know, it's, it's ineffable as everybody says, like, uh -huh. it's really fucking hard to explain, you know, but it's a sensation of, um, love, <laughs> which is like, you know, that's like a wacky thing to try and like describe that, Why but it, you laugh like it that? feels <laughs> almost like it's just such a cheesy answer. Why? It's such no, a no, shitty no, 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 answer. No, no, no. Love. Right there. Why? Why? It's love. <laughs> it feels like you're being no. hugged by the universe. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's a That's what it feels that. like. <laughs> <laughs> Are you happy? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, man. Where's the shame in that? <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> I said it. Oh um, so it really feels. No, it feels like. Um, there's almost that like this. Though, right? There's almost like. Good? There's almost like this uh, gratification 
of knowing like we're working so hard in this in this world and this this like maybe it's an illusion maybe you know whatever but the, the game that we're playing mm -hmm. is a fucking game for sure yeah you know without a doubt right you know, and so we get so tied up within that. I mentioned like the horse wearing the blinders, mm -hmm. like that's us. You know, yeah. we're the horse wearing the blinders. Work is the most important thing. My social media thing is really important. My, you know, like this idea of who I am is the most important mm. thing. Behind that, there's this whole other world. The patterns mm. that turn into a muscle. I'm not sure yeah. I'm yeah. Is that a question are you saying? I'm just paraphrasing what you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So that that yeah. deeper stuff, and that's where it gets interesting. Is is the I thought I was rubbing my foot against Navid's leg, but it was the <laughs> table. <laughs> oh, <glad. laughs> that would have been awkward. <laughs> I liked it. Yeah, it felt good. I'm all about universal love. Hugging and love. Yeah. So then you understood. Basically, you understood. <laughs> let's say it together. You understood love. Yeah. A lot better. Yeah, and I think so. I think so, okay. and and it felt like Say it, it felt like <laughs> it felt like um, almost like Give a, him a hug, man. almost <laughs> almost like a sensation of um, it's like a like a load off, like like to die would be a load off, hmm. you know. So as opposed to being afraid of of death, it's hmm. almost like oh. There's like this whole other loving, like embrace light thing mm -hmm. on the other side that I think most of us are inherently afraid of. You know, most people say, especially men, like, I'm not afraid of death. Like, fuck no, you. No, I do. Like, that's one of the biggest like, <laughs> things that I deal with is like dealing with death. You know what I mean? Like, I just I haven't dealt with that. It? I think about it a lot. Yeah. yeah. Oh, a lot. Good. You know? I think that means so. you're smart. <laughs> like most, I think most like insightful people probably think about death yeah, a lot. Yeah, I think I think about death and how much time there is, and then you know, what to do in my life, this that, and so I know that DMT. And I have heard about that DMT does this, and also ayahuasca really helps you deal with death. And you know, that's yeah. one of the big things that I hear from most people. Yeah, it. psilocybin has been shown to help people uh, specifically, like on their their final days you know like mm -hmm. i think like on, on, oncology wards is that mm -hmm. what that would be called but people dealing with like yeah you have about a month yeah. you know wow you know and it's like oh whoa you know like right now having this conversation we're like it's indefinite whatever yeah. 70 years you don't even think uh, about it it's yeah. not a reality the other day i was walking to from the gym to go to from the like beach gym little circuit thing when to watch the sun instead of being inside of the gym that's mm -hmm. another conversation um you know but there was this woman that her name was noel i think and she has uh dementia mm -hmm. totally out of it you know so she had her her caretaker person with her and they're walking and noel she's like you know barely she's looking for her mother you know her mother's mm -hmm. been dead for 20 years or whatever you know yeah. it's completely disoriented yeah. You know, so all of us were in here or, you know, you know I, wore, I wore my fancy pants and like I got my muscles and I like, you know, it's yeah, like we have yeah. this ego, this kind of like, like drobe that we put on top. But like, dude, we're all going to fucking die. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the likelihood of, of somebody in this room having dementia and being in like a really sad place is like the odds are stacked against us that that's the case. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so it's so recognizing like, dude, just like you know, give somebody a hug. Right now. <laughs> 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 Sorry to get all dark. Uh, no, but that's actually a really light topic. I, I mean that from a light place. Yeah. Uh, what I'm do you mean? You just said like there's a chance two out of like five in here. Are it's something like... really high. I forget what it is. And the, <laughs> yeah. and the effects of it. The effects of it happened 30 yeah. years before. Like the beginning stages of dementia happen. Start manifesting your body 30 years before it actually shows. Whoa. So start taking your fucking brain seriously. And CBD. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think CBD is probably really effective. I that's mean, I think a, a lot of that stuff is. I think anything that reduces inflammation is effective. Yeah, you know, and that's a big thing with depression as well. Mm -hmm. you know, so a, a depressed brain is an inflamed brain. You know, so we're eating a lot of food, sugars, you know, whatever kind of in, you know, tox, toxic substances are floating around our world. Exhaust fumes and mm. fucking plastics. Are you big on supplements? Only because they are big in my sponsors, big like, and big and big in my world, mm -hmm. you know. So people send me a lot of supplements and stuff, yeah. and, and I don't like turn them down. They're like, "Oh, I've got this great like thing that makes you awesome." I'm like, "Yeah, sure, I'll try it." Whatever, I'll try it. Yeah, you know. So I have like more supplements than what I need, um, but the only ones I really like buy are like magnesium. You know, I don't even know if I need that. I could just eat more cacao or something. You know, like I, don't, yeah. I don't think you need supplements if you're sleeping if you're well, doing you're doing a balanced consistent diet, consistent healthy diet, balanced diet. You probably yeah, there's nothing that. that trumps that. 
Yeah. If you're tired and you're out of it and all that stuff, I think supplements can be beneficial to get you back on track to do the right thing. Uh, but the right thing is you don't need supplements. You need yeah, actually, salads you, and freaking sleep. Taking any supplements and you felt the difference? Like the, especially like, like yeah. I'm not talking about the magnesium, zinc, and stuff, but like the um, like the brain. Like nootropics? Yeah, like nootropics. 5-HTP. Yeah, so all that stuff, they're all tools. Yeah. You know, so I look at any supplement the same way that I would look at any, you know, like a cannabis yeah. right. or a psilocybin or, mm -hmm. and you know, fill in the blank thing, uh, you know, a green tea. You know, caffeine, like all these different things. There's just tools to have in the tool belt. You don't need to every day to build the house, take every fucking tool out and yeah. just like, here yeah. we go. <laughs> you know, you're like, okay, today, like, I think, you know, maybe 5 HTB would be really beneficial. Right. You know, my sleep's been off. Maybe I'd had some type of, you guys mentioned MDMA. I had some type of thing that's yeah. kind of like throw my neurotransmitters. A couple of weeks before and after, it's good to do that, you know. It's yeah. funny, when we go to the desert sometimes, like, I have my little. The yeah, first time vitamin I, card. The first know? time I took it, you gave it to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I go around and give everybody vitamins. So yeah, essentially, it's though, man. it's like about getting out of your body's way and letting it do its own thing, which is more important than anything else. That's it. Yeah. 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 We're in the way of, our, we're in the way of ourselves. And just grow, right? So it's like, shit, just let it do its own thing. Don't feed it bad shit. And uh, it's stronger than any supplement. Yeah, you wouldn't have made it through you know darwinian evolution if it weren't for your body being a really strong self-healing mechanism yeah but when you have a cell phone pressed up to your face and your testicles all day all of a sudden you're in the way of yourself exactly when you're hunched over a position that's collapsing your lungs and putting uh -huh. stress on your heart and right. not allowing fluids to move through your body you're that's in right. the way of yourself mm -hmm. right when you're angry about bullshit that doesn't matter you're in the way of yourself mm. You know, but all these are choices that we, we have the, the ability to make. We just don't get any education around that because we're educated to be cogs. Mm. Sorry to get all like high and mighty like up on my pedestal. But I think that's some real shit. No, no. That's what you hear. You know, yeah. you get that. Yeah. I mean, that's like our school privilege talk, though. Okay. Yeah, right. Exactly. Now, at, the end, at the end there, I, I felt a little bit <laughs> like, no, no like you. you're that's talking like. <laughs> but I think that is some real shit. Like we are. We're not taught about taking care of ourselves. We're taught about taking care of the right. country. Yeah. yeah. You know, we're taught yeah. about taking care of like the corporation. Yeah. You know, because that's where the money is. We're Making actually, a living and yeah, pretty much. Yeah. We've been taught to become factory workers, essentially. The yeah, now that doesn't work anymore because now we don't need factory out. workers. Right. You know, now we need creative people. Right. Yeah. We haven't made the adjustment. So yet. We haven't made the adjustment. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we will. Well, yeah, we have to. And that's what's happening. What that's, why that is <laughs> that's why that's why college and stuff like that is starting to become yes. pretty contentious. Oh. You know, it's like, oh, well, like $100,000 to go to this thing. Mm -hmm. All that information is on the internet. Yeah. You yeah. know, all that information and more is in a mentor. Mm -hmm. That mentor might even pay you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like there's yeah, all these different that, ways. I mean, you now. definitely need training for, I mean, like, I don't know, you know, the surgery or, you know, you have to have some kind of a, some yeah. people to trust you kind of need that stuff. But, yeah. Um, I was going to say, I don't know what the fuck I was designed to do because, like, I definitely. What don't you? You're feel like that. one of the best freaking Fact hip hop artists in the world. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah. I'm talking about, like, the factory worker design. I'm like, I definitely oh. don't fit in that. Like. <laughs> right. That's <laughs> a cool place, man. I, I recommend everybody, if they have interest, getting to that place where they're unhirable. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's funny because. You get like, to I, a point where, yeah. like, I don't think I could work for somebody. Yeah. Like, I remember that moment ish. Not like a day. Yeah. But in general, you kind of think about it. I'm like, Oh, I couldn't work for somebody. Mm -hmm. Like it just wouldn't work. Exactly. That's I I I support that. More, I would more not people be able to that. do a nine to five that lifestyle. You know, <sighs> doesn't serve me. You know, I've I've wondered about that. Um, without going too deep into that, I've wanted that for some people, but some people seem that that safety and security means more yeah. to them than the chains that would come with a nine Dude. to five. Oh yeah, so, man. I think yeah, there's two things to that. Like, I think like one thing is um, that security and fear of it, and a lot of times I've noticed people like don't really have. Most people don't have that type of ambition. They're not that passionate about the one thing in, in life to want to, like, you know, go after it. And that, you, and know, you know what that is? It's to... fear, basically. They've learned to be afraid. So when you're afraid, you never develop confidence, the balls and the ambition to, like, break the chains and be like, let me see what I want. It's yeah. all about what the master wants. Right. Yeah, for some people, I think they don't really, like, want anything for some people. Like, it's because of yeah. the fear, I think. If they were, because I I believe mm. that human beings are magical, and yeah. there is a magic within all of us, because we've created 
from that. And mm-hmm. if we tap into that, we'll find it. But some people are so far removed from that spirit mm. that they don't even know how to communicate. But don't think that. like if you knew someone for like five, ten years, you would kind of see that hidden talent in them or something like that, or what something or no, not necessarily. Well, I mean, you develop at a young age. Yeah. You know, up until you're twelve, ninety, over ninety percent of the programming comes from somewhere else. And mm-hmm. if that programming is so harmful and you've seen so much trauma, dude, you gotta feel for that and have empathy empathy for that. And maybe if you do and you give it love, maybe it's the love will grow. But until then, it's in a dark place of fear. Yeah, because I'm an artist, and I know like a lot of artists in general are, you know, they've had really hard trauma, tough times and times, maybe a lot of times. You know, right. But like somehow they've kind of they they transmuted. Kind of they trans, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But you know, some people. Might. Anyway, I like the idea that there's only two. This could be a bullshit idea, but just play with it. Cool. There's only two states. There's there's fear and creativity. Mm. So I mean, people could probably pick this apart, but I think that's an interesting kind of just idea to kind of tinker I, I operate based on that yeah I don't call it creative I call it love though yeah sure I yeah love, love creativity it's all the same stuff yeah word. it's all semantics yeah right that's what I meant the L, the L, the L word yeah love and creativity <laughs> let's the title L the word. episode love <laughs> yeah. yeah right Aaron Alexander talks about yeah. love yeah <laughs> no really but, but, yeah. but that's something that I'll feel but then uh-huh. at the same time I also kind of I can play devil's advocate with uh-huh. that because then sometimes when you're in fear when you feel like you are you know, about to die or it's a famine or whatever it is. Sometimes really creative ideas come out of that necessity, mm. you know? So, but then maybe you could argue that point and say, well, at some point you had that love or the, you know, creativity came up within that. And that was what, uh-huh. I don't know, fear and creativity. Right. Or yeah. the divine masculine and the feminine. I think it's the same thing. It's a parallel. Yeah. Yeah. Or the left side, right side of the brain. It's funny how you need to have traumatic experiences to sometimes like kind of shake your snow globe can i use the quote i always say pain Chaos is, a ru- is a ladder <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's what you, so pain is a rush of knowledge pouring into the areas we need the most in order to learn mm. so essentially if we view pain as that there's never misery right it's just mm. opportunity mm. and that's mm. what you're saying basically and people don't a lot of times they're so afraid of that and then when they get that pain they go through trauma and then that becomes this big fearful thing that paralyzes them yeah Mm -hmm. you know but for you it it seems like people like you they understand that and they 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 rise above it and like what Erfan said like the artists that become artists through pain yeah Mm -hmm. yeah i value pain a lot man it's like i I have my knees my knees a little like it's it was i was done like some deadlift and bs whatever and it kind of tweaked my stuff out a little bit Mm -hmm. but it got me really excited about like really paying attention to the quality of movement yeah. and the the, qual- and the the quality of my rest and you know being like cool sweet i'll like write more and read more this is great i need to rest i'll just mm-hmm. read a lot you so know sometimes they're really helpful something you said one time um, on, on one of your shows you said you were kind of cynical towards like people having gifts and you're like is it really gifts or is it like us being sculpted into this thing mm. through the experiences and oh yeah which is an interesting topic to talk about I didn't get it. was it yeah actually gift yeah so he was saying is it the guy was saying whoever it was i don't remember who was talking about people have gifts and he's like is oh it gi- okay, okay okay gifts okay, actually, yeah, yeah he's like is it really gifts or is it something that has been sculpted through time and mm-hmm. evolution of the person which becomes this thing that becomes stronger and better yeah. i think it's a combination gifts, yeah mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's a combination. Mm. Is that where you're at right now with it? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, certain people. Like if you, if you're, if you're over seven feet tall, there's like, it's like a one in three chance you're in the NBA or yeah. something ridiculous. That's like true. That. I and think, yeah, I think it's a combination of you know, it, nurture and nature. so I'd imagine yeah. as as yeah, many like great those things. people that you bring on, and then you're also your own interest in reading, studying, and being a student and scholar. Yeah, um, you must constantly fi- find yourself to be wrong compared to where you were the, the year before oh for sure right you're like fuck i'm a dumbass yeah there was something there was something about um i've just posted this thing it was like a quote about if you don't think you are a douchebag six months ago and you like look back yeah. six months you're probably not trying hard enough yeah. you're not learning you're enough a yeah <laughs> <laughs> you're probably a douchebag it's true, man. <laughs> when you yeah. look back you're like Oh my! Oh, I was not even close. It's embarrassing. It's like that year you probably didn't work enough. You know, you probably just cruised at where you were at. In the past ten years, how much like the information they used to get have changed? Yeah, and it's still changing. You know, and like I think I read a good about 
a good amount about like dieting and what's good diets and stuff. I mean, like you hear new shit all the time that's coming all the time with the other stuff. And you're just like, what the fuck? What? Are yeah, I right doing? now, right now, we're 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 attacking fruit. You know, fruit's bad yeah. for you. I'm like, just calm down, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. like, just allow it to spin back. Like, fast forward three years, and fruit's gonna be fruit fruitarian. Yeah. You know, it's the only way. We didn't yeah. realize. Don't eat butter anymore. It's bad for you. <laughs> exactly. Right. You know, it's just like everyone. Just like it's the same thing in investing. You know, you want to invest when looking at the median. It's like okay, it's below the median. Mm. Perfect. Get in there. Right, but the same thing with food stuff. When it's going like extreme keto, yeah, the only yeah. way to live is in a ketonic <laughs> state. Like you're a fucking Eskimo yeah, your whole life, or you're gonna yeah. eyes will explode. <laughs> it's like, dude, too far. Yeah, you're, you're, you're buying in at the yourself. top of the market. On the subject, like, that's cool. are, are grains really bad? I'm not the I'm not the expert. I'm not the expert in it. You know, I talk to lots of experts, and lots of experts say say yeah for sure. Yeah, eating gluten, sugar, and uh, even gluten. Yeah, yeah. They'll say this. They'll say that you can actually find gluten in inflamed joints, and when you start to remove that gluten from the diet, you'll start to actually remove it from the physical connective Mm. tissue. That's pretty freaking interesting. Yeah, anything that creates an inflammatory response to your body is is. Not well, but then at the same time, like in, inflammation is really important. You know, inflammation's that's how you heal yourself. Mm. So excessive inflammation would be a better way to, to phrase that. Mm. But that's like stress. You know, so stress is this huge umbrella term for like most like getting up in the day, like moving around the world. That's a, that's a stressful state. Mm. You know, so figuring out how to manage your stress mm-hmm. that's going to trump almost any dietary approach that you take i think and to add to that what i heard like from the same question because like i was curious about that too it's the, based on what what where your ancestors were and the closer to the sun they were how far they were to that and what i think they, they were pretty close they were so you're pretty much good with it i'd yeah. imagine yeah. Yeah. it's funny can we i have a question because I, I heard something on your podcast and i didn't really get it this lady had a made in Artemis. I got it, but oh, just, indeed, like, to be yeah. honest, at this part of it, I was she doing something. I was like, sending a text message, talking to people, closing yeah. some deals and shit. Yeah. But um, <laughs> this guy, the real estate deals, not the, not that type of deal. Right. But um, <laughs> so she was saying, deal? what's the other deal? Uh, what's the other drug deal? deal? Drug deals. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I was I was calling him. I'm like, Doug, <laughs> try to get some you know, DMT. That trap life. You know? <laughs> Paying the bills on Nomad Land, you know, lights on. Um, but yeah, this Nadine uh, Artemis, she was talking about how actually the sun is good for you. I mean, obviously the sun is good for you, but isn't sunblock is not good for you because it only blocks out the UVs and UVB. Not the UVBs and yeah, so it blocks UVB. out one specific frequency of the light. You know, so that, when you're looking at, at at exposure, like the sun, you know, we like for out forever yeah. we've worshiped the sun the yeah. son of christ yeah. <laughs> you know there's all these metaphors in relation to all the religions which again i'm not like an expert of that stuff either but you know it's like that's we need the sun to grow like mm. any plant right and so when we're putting sunblock on ourselves you know we were sold that idea that we need to block out a specific frequency of light mm. so when you're putting sunblock on yourself it's blocking out that uvb which ends up being it's essentially it's like taking like a supplement form of food Okay. Right. So your body understands how to process most food as long as it came out of the ground, you know, mm-hmm. and it's like or it has a face or, you know, whatever. It's like your body's like, yeah, we can figure that out. We've yeah. done that before. But once you start taking out supplement forms of that thing that mm-hmm. had a face, I mean, if I'm whatever. I'm I'm pro vegetarian, pro all sorts of things. People don't need to eat faces necessarily. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> that's when it starts to complicate yeah. things. And that's what we do with sun. All right. mm-hmm. well, the, the thing that I heard about sun. I, out of all these people that you brought on the show, has anybody talked about sun gazing? I've never had somebody really get into sun gazing. Have well, you Jack, heard about Jack it though? Cruz. Oh yeah, I'm a sun gazer. Oh, you do. Yeah, I'm 45 down. minutes I'm, I'm before down. sunset and 45 after sunrise. No, well, no. Well, you want the sun to be up still. It's not like after. You're looking right it, at the no, sun. No, is it after sunrise so, before sunset? That's what so the oh, people both. that sun gaze based on what this Indian guru brought at some point was it's only safe to do it 45 minutes before sunset and 45 minutes after sunrise. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That's For when the UV rays thought, are not strong and they're not harmful, is what he was saying. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And you got to build up from 10 seconds the next day, another 10 seconds, and you can build all the way up to according to him 45 minutes. And I've heard people to have some interesting experiences. Yeah. Like, what are the supposed to be the uh, beneficial? So one thing that's interesting, and we're all in like deep water right now, but but one oh, thing yeah, that's in, one one thing that's <laughs> yeah, interesting with yeah. that yeah. is Don't your do it, people. your son <laughs> your son that your eyes actually 
being exposed to sun, mm -hmm. that's a huge part of your brain releasing one setting your circadian rhythm, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of tells your body to release this cascade of hormones to when you wake up, when you go to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, serotonin is a, is a big part of that. Mm -hmm. When your brain, when your eyes are exposed to that sun, serotonin ends up being released. It's like known as being like a feel good mm -hmm. type, type neurotransmitter. And add some molly to that mix. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Well, Why that's, that's what it is. That's, that. that's what it is. Yeah. You know, so we have access to all these different, like, there's this, this, like, uh, t-shirts of the little baby, it's floating around, it's like, I don't do drugs, I am drugs. It's like, we are drugs, you know, and so when you expose yourself to all these natural elements, you really do get juiced with all those different things that we're trying to mm -hmm. kind of replicate with, like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, MDMA yeah, to rave yeah. or whatever. And I think there's a lot of value for MDMA to rave, mm -hmm. you know, and I think it's a lot of value for MDMA in more of like a clinical environment too, yeah, using it for relationships. Yeah, hopefully, yeah, but since the pharmaceutical is going to become legalized around 2022 20, or something like that, and yeah. it's supposed to be, you know, really good quality as far as, you know, I hope calm so. down and stuff like that, it really helps. I think if you do it, if you don't do it regularly is the big thing. So mm -hmm. doing an MDMA session for the brain, from my understanding, slash, slash like personal experience, it feels quite fine. I think you've be doing really high quality and probably don't need to be doing like excessive mm. amounts. Yeah. Um, but I haven't had an experience. I've only, I've only done it in that situation where it's like, cool, we're going to do one and we're going to like really intentionally be, yeah. be about it. And I've only felt great afterwards yeah. personally. Yeah. Me too. My experience with I mean, it. Yeah. I'm but listening. when you start getting in the, in the trend of like, Oh, I'm gonna do it Friday and then I'm gonna do it Saturday. Oh, yeah. And then all oh, this DJ's coming to town on Tuesday. So we got to fucking go. Exactly. That's I've, when you I've get I've had trouble. this with my friends in the past week, the past couple of weeks, you know, they keep inviting me to these event, man, this one's going to be freaking crazy, bro. This DJ is coming from Germany and this guy, I'm like, dude, it's the same thing. Like every mm. event, there's 30 of them every year. And mm. so this one's going to be like, you know, crazy. I'm like, you know, do two, three events a year is fine. You know? How <laughs> yeah. 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 I like concentration. Yeah, it's a big thing. If you're always scattering yourself, it's hard to ever do anything. Mm -hmm. So like you can do. Oh, I don't know how this goes exactly, but you can do more than you think. You just gotta do it one at a time. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not exactly. There's like some brilliant quote, something along those lines. Mm -hmm. But it's like I want to do everything. It's like, yeah, you can do a lot. <laughs> like you yeah. got like 80 good years <laughs> in this adult body. Like you can do a fuck ton. Yeah. But if you try to do everything all the time, then you're probably not going to ever do anything. Exactly. That's uh, the big part. A lot of people think, I think there's a difference. Some people live 80 years and 80 good years. And some people live like 80 years and the last 20 is just fucking agony. And, you know, you know, it's interesting yeah, since we're I'm talking so much that. about, about drugs and stuff. I find I, the idea that, so time, linear time, you know, when you have like this idea, you know, sometimes time like really f flies by. Yeah. And sometimes time kind of feels like it like, it like extends itself. Mm -hmm. Just that idea in, in general is interesting. Um, but with the usage of cannabis, it's really fascinating how time slows down so much. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's kind of an interesting thing. Of, it almost feels as though you can like, this is some wacky shit, but it almost feels like you can, ex you can like extend your time in a sense, your mm -hmm. perceived time in this body through the usage of certain types of substance, substances, or maybe well, just appreciating think, yeah, the world I don't know more. if this makes sense. It just came to my head, but if you're present, you know, and, and you're focused, like you probably time does slow down, you know, the meditative state, you know, like, and for me, one of the only times that I can focus and, you know, not be in a bunch of different places. If I, it's like when I smoke weed, and I'm working on music, you know. Yeah. And that just time slows down for me. And yeah, I love it's almost it. and like I you buy so more time. And I feel like great, you know, <laughs> it's like I feel accomplished and internally I feel great, you know. But other times it's like fucking chaos running around, text messages, talking to people, having a trip, you know. Yeah, it's a fascinating thing that, that we as humans have the option to literally slow down our mm -hmm. perception of time. Yeah. It's wild. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just try yeah, to like step more, outside of like the normal time continuum. I'm just like, let's just step outside for a couple hours and yeah. kind of slow it down. <laughs> like, oh yeah, let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> let's I mean, the more you practice that and through meditation and just like focusing on it, obviously you get better and better at it. You know? Do you meditate? Yeah. How often? Um, I, I, it's so funny. Like, I've been really bad with it for the past eight, nine months. Um, last year when I was doing a lot of yoga, like five times a week, and I was meditating and I was like, you know, I had my rhythm going and cool. um. It was great. I slept better. I felt better. Everything was good, you know, but just like I, I'm traveling a lot right now. That's no excuse, but it's just like I never have a steady schedule. So the I best, get, uh, tomorrow, the best tomorrow. meditation is the one that you'll actually do. Mm. Yeah. So that's a, it's a similar <laughs> thing where it's like if like, oh, man, I did this two weeks where I was doing this fucking great 45 minute. I was hitting it. Yeah. I was yeah. like enlightening shit. <laughs> 
you know, and then you stop for yeah. eight months and you start smoking crack or whatever. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. if you could just commit to like five minutes, yeah. two minutes, whatever. You know, you can you know go like Muslim and just like bow down to the ground and put your forehead on the ground five times yeah. a day. Just commit to something. Yeah. Make it a habit. It's about the connection. You're trying to make connect with yourself. And when you deny yourself for some time through not having a conversation, it happens what it would happen with a friend. It happens with the self too. So it's like, mm. I haven't talked to you for a while. Right. And then you start forgetting how to talk and then it becomes a little mm. awkward. The more time you spend with it, you know, the more yeah. you're going to be able to find ways to love it. Yeah, you got to so nurture easy. your relationship with Absolutely. yourself, just like a marriage. Because yeah. yeah. you are married to yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're the only one that you're guaranteed to be married to for the rest of your fucking yeah, life. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's so easy. To, it's so easy <laughs> to commit to, like, let's say, like five, ten minutes in the morning when you wake up, first thing when you wake up or before you sleep. But like, it's still, you know, you do it. I don't do it. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but it becomes a habit, though. If you do it, I think for 40 days straight, I think it's almost that's, impossible. You're not right. To. You're right. That's what I was trying to get to. Like, that's how I am. When I'm in rhythm and I have momentum, I stick to it. You know, like, even whether it's with the gym or meditation, I'm like, this feels so good. I've been doing it for a few weeks. I'm never going to stop. This like, like, I need it in my yeah. life, you know? And then I go on a trip and things get fucked up or something like that. And then like, I completely lose it. It becomes yeah. like brushing teeth. I remember when I couldn't meditate for 10 minutes, even through guided meditation. But now if I don't do it, something's seriously off, man. Mm. I feel it. Right. You don't brush your teeth. Yeah, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, but, but I recommend real. people to do maybe kundalini meditation. That's when you really mm. feel it. And then you're like, all right, I can do regular meditations yeah. after that. Have you ever, do, you, do you do kundalini yoga at all? I've done a, a month of consistent kundalini is my total experience with it. How? Slash like some other random. Every yoga. day? Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Well, I might have missed a couple. It was like, you know, it was like five, for the most five part, to yeah. seven days a week. For, Where was it at? Uh, Golden Bridge. They're closed down now. Okay. And yeah. How was your experience? Did you like it? It was great. Yeah. yeah, I think it's cool, man. I like all the spine rolling and all like the rotational stuff that you're doing uh -huh. with it. So a lot of a lot of yogas are, are a bit more like sagittal. They're like more like frontal, like a lot of down dog, and you're kind of going like this, yeah. you know, forward ahead. And there's camera, so we can kind of see them going like like this. Uh -huh. um, but with with the kundalini, it's like a lot of this, you know, the kundalini, the spiral. Uh huh. You yeah. know, I also like there's a lot of vocalization with mm -hmm. it. You know, the so mantras, that's that's yeah. a that's a huge thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't need to be quiet while you're doing yoga. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's 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 all right to sing. It's really good yeah. for you, actually. It's like another form of yoga. Sing. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. So like kirtans, I think are uh, you know this is out there for so many people, but the reality, like the like the the science and the biology of what's happening when you're in a group and you're all singing together, mm. man. Oh man. There's like not a lot that's more physiologically impactful than mm. that experience in, the, you know, oh, in a beneficial yeah. way. Especially when you just do the breath of fire with everybody, and the and the guru's like, you know. Make sure everybody's with the same breath. Imagine yeah. 60 people breathing together at the same you time. Inhale, that? exhale fast. Kun breath of fire gets you high. Now doing it with 60 people, mm. that's something that's else. Awesome. I was yeah. thinking like, gonna if, annoy the shit out of people at the yoga studio. I started freestyling and shit. Like, <laughs> Dude, it'd be tight. No, it'd be good. To calm down. Dude, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we need that. Evolution yeah. is dependent upon those of us willing to be different. That's true. You know, so if you're a person that's like, we need to fucking loosen up a little <laughs> bit up in this yoga studio. It's hard to freestyle uh -huh. in a calm manner. I'm gonna bring manner, in right? my. Yeah. So it's hard to like rap in a calm manner. It's gonna <laughs> <laughs> pull people on there. Yeah. That's good though. Yeah. That's, that's what we need, serious, man. Yeah. That's what we yeah. need. Um, <laughs> let's talk about your let's talk about your podcast a little bit. <laughs> yeah, what's up? How do you feel about it? I think it's I think it's dope. I'm excited about it, man. Yeah. I take notes on my own show. You know, like yeah. I'll listen to it again. I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. That yeah. son, that UVB. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's 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 a cool opportunity yeah. to get to. Uh, I mean, the the back end value of something like that is you get to meet all these really mm -hmm. brilliant people. And you get a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I have. I've been I'm, I've been really. You bring yeah. some special people in consistently. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think with that, it, it's so it's a, a few things. One. Um, I reach out to a lot of people. I go to a lot of events, you know, I'm like, I like travel a lot mm -hmm. and, yeah. uh, when I'm around, you know, for one thing I do manual therapy, you know, it's like rolfing and, you know, body work. Yeah. And so I can help, <laughs> you know, like that's a, that's a that's big currency. That's a big thing. That's currency. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so it's, so it's like with me, it's like, Oh dude, I, I heard you, you know, had a shoulder thing. Like I work with, you know, you know, I have a long, a decent sized list of like celebrity, whatever, mm. you know, so I'm like vouched for, yeah. like, I'd be happy to just hook you up and see if we can help that shoulder. Mm. I was like, oh, cool. Sweet, man. I'd love That's that. That's cool, man. 
Yeah, it's been a really cool thing. I bet you use that pitch a lot of different occasions. Yeah, I mean, I probably wouldn't lead with I have like a long list of celebrity or whatever. <laughs> I'm just saying because like there, I have I have that that you know I've been pre vetted. No, I meant like yeah. in dating life and stuff like. That. Oh yeah, acro yoga is good for dating. Is that what it is? Yeah, it's good because you get in contact with people. Yeah. It's good in any relation. It's relationship building. You're rapport building fast. They like, tighten that body up. Yeah, right. <laughs> tighten that booty up. No, seriously, like, like getting some getting someone to, to balance on your feet or on your hands. Mm -hmm. or, it's like woo. <laughs> or on your. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that's called yeah. balance. That's Acro Yoga 2.0. <laughs> like do the helicopter is what yeah. you call it? No, seriously, Acro people porn. people, yeah. people should learn that shit. Mm -hmm. You know, people need to learn something, in my opinion, something that, that a practice that, that gets them into connecting with other people. Mm -hmm. We learn all this, this solo stuff, you know, but like even like playing an instrument, like an instrument is solo, but it's to connect with other people, mm. you know, mm, like, that. like that. So investing yourself, like really looking at it. And I intentionally did that with dance. I intentionally did that kind of with body work. I was kind of just inter interested in it, mm -hmm. but I'll intentionally do that. I'll look at like, okay, what's the 10 year plan of this hobby? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, is this going to make me a better fill in the blank? Is it going to help my career? Is it going to help my ability to just feel, you know, happy, whatever it is. Yeah. A big part of happiness is being able to connect with people. Aaron, exactly. Tell Absolutely. me a little bit about Paul Check, man. I mean, that's huh. <laughs> yeah, pretty amazing, huh? Yeah, he's a, he's a solid dude. Yeah, yeah. What do you want to know Just about Paul? Whatever comes to mind. I like Paul hmm. because uh, I like that he is up there in age, and um, he's just he's good with consistency. You know, I so I think that that's a really valuable thing, is having, you know, it's like the meditation. The most important meditation is the one that you'll do. You know, so when you see somebody practicing certain principles for freaking 50 years mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, wow, like you're still doing pretty well. You know, Paul, I don't know how old, how old he is right now. I think he's like 63 or something like that. I'm, I'm making that up, you know, but he's like ripped, you know, he deadlifts more than I do. And he's, you know, he's, he's, he's just been consistent with things for a long time. Very insightful and knowledgeable. Yeah. Yeah. He does a lot of medicine work, man. You know, there's oh, a, he does. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's like outspoken about it, right? Yeah, you know. So there's a lot of. I don't think you need to just do psychedelics to like have insights. Yeah. Um, but if you organize your experiences well and you do the work outside of the psychedelic experiences, I think it's it's really they go hand in hand. I believe that. Yeah, you got to do both though. You know, so sometimes people can become too consumed by by eating the medicine, mm -hmm. you know, and the medicines and the dosage. Mm. You know, so if you're just like if you're not doing the work in your day-to-day -day life, you know, and you're still a shithead to your girlfriend and you still show up late for all your appointments and all that stuff, it's like, no, like you're not getting the memo. Yeah. <laughs> Don't eat more drugs. <laughs> like sort your That's shit out. Is, yeah. Then eat some drugs. Sort your shit out. <laughs> it's a cycle. Like, I mean, <laughs> like an interesting right. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, He has I'd his own, he has own school, it. right? Mm -hmm. His own mm -hmm. like, uh, check institute. Yeah. 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 Represent. Like think, think like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just thought a cheddar pop, popcorn. Pop, I was like, no, pop, no, no. Pop, <laughs> Exactly. Pop, canceled dinner tonight. Go Popcorn's home. all right. So, uh, a lot of the healthiest people in the world eat a lot of white rice. White rice yeah. is actually the is from Stephen Gundry, he's another guy I did a podcast with. Who mm -hmm. um, there's a book called The Plant Paradox, mm -hmm. and they get all into how that the, the shell, the bran, I think it's called the endosperm, the, you know, the brown part wrapping the rice. That's a protective. That's like a you're like eating the helmet. Yeah. So that ends up being actually quite rough on your digestive that's system that's what she said and then they yeah. circumcise it <laughs> yeah and then they yeah. circumcise it so that's the whole point yeah so like that circumcision <laughs> of that so white rice is, is good for you <laughs> from, no <laughs> serious I just, that's what I want to hear let's go with it you know no, like it's a big part of that. my, my yeah. trainer used to tell me eat white rice yeah yeah because yeah. Persian food is like it digests easy it digests yeah. easy yeah exactly you know so we, lo we look at the we look at the yeah exactly man mm -hmm. so for, for again thousands of years yeah. people have been doing that and then all of a sudden 10 years ago it's like oh by the way yeah. we've been wrong for like through our whole evolution <laughs> like you really need to start buying this product mm, mm. you know and that's what we do with so many things it is. so mm -hmm. i'm i'm at the point where really like i'm like i want to see it and then i'll believe it mm. you know like yeah. when someone's selling anything i'm yeah. like show me results mm -hmm. like that's all i care about yeah and, and it's then, hard sometimes but this stuff because like they're not you know there's no one no checks and balances that like, you don't know if they actually work or not like. and then the other thing with show me results is you could be it still could be messed up because 
A, the results could be short term. Mm-hmm. They could be all all yoked out on steroids and you know randomness. They could be like high on cocaine. You're like, well, that guy's got a lot of energy. <laughs> you're like, yeah, it's the keto. Yeah. It's like, well, and he just did a fucking fat keto. line oh, of yay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, it goes with the A. Yeah. This is a great supplement. <laughs> Who are some of the? What do you have? Like hundred and something episodes so far? Oh, I don't even know. Oh, one hundred seventy-eight wow. or hundred, almost one hundred eighty or something like that. And you how do long? it? Oh, yeah. Uh, like everyone's about an hour. No, no, no. I mean, yeah. how long have you been doing it? Sorry. Three <laughs> over three years. Three oh, and okay. some. Three and yeah. some. Some years. Yeah. Um, hundred something episodes. Which one's your favorite? Oh man, yeah. I don't. I don't. I have, I have no idea. I like the recent ones. I just like. I usually just keep on liking the mm. recent ones. Yeah. So like, I don't even know who was the because last one. The Sue Hitzman. Sue guess. Hitzman was good. The quality of of um, like my brain changes. Mm-hmm. You know. So when I look at uh, at like previous ones, I'm like, I think I was kind of an asshole. <laughs> you know, like anything a year ago, I'm like, ah. Oh. Yeah. You know, like I, th- I feel like I could have been like more present with that person mm. or i feel like uh, but the it, fact that mm. you're so vulnerable and honest about it, i love that about you that you talk about it you talk about like okay i was egotistical like that or i i came in with my ego into a lot of doors and and i think that makes everything okay after you do that it does it does yeah you could i mean and that was it, there was a moment that where i got all high and mighty on my pedestal here where i was like blah 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 and i was like talking as though uh-huh. like this is fact you know, and that's like a little bit of my ego being uh-huh. like in the back, uh, back of my, you know, in the in the in the stands. I'm like, woo, like go uh-huh. Aaron. It's always a struggle. With you know, that to get done. I'm like, oh, that was whack. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> and then the awareness kicks in. Yeah, and it kicks in because of the work that you do consistently. Yeah, I th- I think so, and I know that I could do more work. Yes, you know, I don't I don't want to you know portray as though I'm like you know I'm like fucking pretty normal man i don't i'm not doing anything overly crazy i think i'm probably consistent yeah you know i do some form of movement something every day Mm -hmm. i like sweat pretty hard i go to like hot yoga and feel like i'm gonna die Mm -hmm. almost every day you know i'll read something every day i'll do a little ceremony before i go to bed every day Mm -hmm. you know it's like it's those consistent things that really add up and you're you're having fun with it people a lot of times think they think it's like a chore but you're enjoying it yeah, exactly. That's the big thing. Yes. Yeah, you got to you got to make yeah, like pretty much everything. I mean, I'm and I'm, I'm saying everything in your life, but yeah, pretty much whatever you do makes you feel good, you know, about yourself afterwards, you know. Mm-hmm. Not you everything. I know. I'm saying like not everything, but for the most part, like you porn's probably, a real bummer. What is porn? <laughs> 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 it's a struggle. The struggle is real. Yeah. But, so uh, speaking of that, though, yeah. like you mentioned, like not having sex for a while did wonders for you. Oh yeah, with Aubrey. In what sense? Oh, why well, should be a premature ejaculator? And then I fucked Aubrey, and I was all good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just joking. No, I'm just joking. no, no. Uh, I mentioned that on Aubrey's, Aubrey's, uh, Aubrey Marcus. His, oh, his, yeah, his the way pod- you said it was his, hilarious. His, his, his like, podcast. it's for a friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about premature ejaculation, Aubrey. Yeah, I feel like Aubrey's like he's like seen as like a sex guru these days. I appreciate That's that because he's open with like his his open relationship stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah I remember I was. Yeah, telling you about yeah. there's a guy that I, I really love but he said he has an open relationship and that confused me yeah, yeah. you know and then I was why that confused you kind of open you open like avenue for you to like maybe be accepted oh it confused it, right? you because you're like oh I gotta look at this well because I, I I look up to the guy let's be real like I, I love the way he he handles life he goes about life and the way he yeah, does I'm sure you know but then he, that came out of nowhere and I'm like oh that that's just my values are so different but am I gonna go back to my ego and how dare you you know this is westernized or let me try to find that what he sees and I tried going through it so I would have like random conversations with people like what do you think about open relationship you know yeah and I understood a lot of it is about crushing your ego crushing insecurity crushing jealousy and uh, working through crushing all those people's wives okay and, and working through those we were all thinking it so I, I, I loved it what I got to at the end was it's just a preference yeah that's what Chris Chris Ryan who's another 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 good dude people can check out sex at dawn he, he called he calls it uh, yeah, yeah, like a that. like a vegetarian or carnivore or vegan or what you know whatever food you mm. prefer it's a similar thing with your sexuality mm. you, know, you look at most critters in nature most of them are polyamorous even like the penguins are apparently fucking around 
you know so it's like the <laughs> like the, the, the separation between human beings and like the rest of the animal kingdom oh, yeah. mm-hmm. i don't think it's as big or even existent mm-hmm. as we think it is have you yeah. ever had that where you look at people and you're like that's a fucking gorilla not like a racist way but like yeah. that's a fucking gorilla yeah like that's or like an alien or yeah. whatever like, like we think that so we know we mm-hmm. think it's like oh cool like human like i get it <laughs> you know but like we're just fucking aliens dude yeah. we don't like we're, there's no uh, we have this this sense as though we are you know on this team thing but i think it's you know no, it's not at all we're all just yeah. a bunch of animals dude. We don't know well what he said on. about uh about wolves and connecting it to some female he's like female wolves um, scream louder so they can attract more males. To yeah, they want to gang the bang. So you have more babies that yeah. way. Yeah. But all, all kinds of animals are different ways. Like I said, like, oh, well, a lot of male animals sleep that you know with multiple females, but the females only with that <laughs> one male. But you know, there's a lot of animals that are different. You know, there's just like all kinds. Of, well, so yeah. even even the idea that a sperm ooh, and an egg that there's just that's just a one one to one relationship where one sperm connects with one egg and then you make a baby. Mm-hmm. That's new information. Yeah. You know, so for for most of our history, again, if a girl's hooking up with you know a tribe of dudes, the sensation or the idea is like, okay, cool. Like Timmy, he's really strong. Bobby, he's really good at making uh, houses. Marco, mm-hmm. he's really smart. So like, we're trying to create this life force, and I, I think the reality of things, it's actually, I think it's probably closer than that mm-hmm. what we think it is. Some pimp came up with that line. <laughs> Listen, baby. You got to get everybody. <laughs> well, no, that's what it I'm means. Kidding. To t- it takes a village to yeah to raise a child. To so, a so, child. W- so within that, when you look at that, that's like that's think of how much more beneficial that is for the for the mm-hmm. the, the livelihood of the child yeah. and a half your tribe. Know? Yeah, and so it's like when it, when a baby when it, seriously <laughs> yeah. yeah when it, when a baby's crying, it's like get the baby it's your baby you mm-hmm. know it's our baby yeah, yeah. you know there's like no like is- like for me i'm like that's not my baby <laughs> like i'm out like <laughs> you know we've been going for the past like 10 minutes like aubrey marcus is watching he's like i got him yeah the opening up but that's what it's, i mean he had a yeah, point I, I, I can't do it at this stage in my life but maybe <laughs> maybe later change, you're yeah. open to that um, yeah how do you well that's no, personal okay anyway so uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyway. yeah i'm very sensitive <laughs> about talking about personal information <laughs> <laughs> yeah it won't divulge anything <laughs> <laughs> but uh, one thing i really can I, can I, I want to make it go go go, 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 go. go. No, i was gonna say something about your podcast i really like it because um the guests that you bring it's all you always like e- each episode you learn stuff you know mm. it's very informative and even like joe rogan is one of my favorite oh, podcasts i, I listen to a lot so, <laughs> I'll just say my piece and I'll uh-huh. be done with it. Like even Joe Rogan, the episodes that he brings comedians uh, or actors and stuff like that, they're not really interesting to me. The ones that he brings the scientists or historians. I love or the science like, ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love. So same with your show. Yeah. I think that's very interesting. But so you didn't watch I'm the Ted just, Nugent I'm one? Just, uh, what did yesterday? you say? What's up? Ted Nugent. No, I didn't no. see that one yet. I'll probably yeah. check that one out. I was on it yesterday. No, All I haven't right. seen that one yet. Yeah. I'm not recommending it. I'm just asking you. Yeah, yeah, no, I haven't seen it. Anyways, back to sex. I feel more I feel more comfortable in the realm of like health science conversations all mm-hmm. that and right. I try to maintain some degree of like I I value Joe greatly as a as a I mean as a guy in general but as a, yeah. an interviewer or a host or whatever mm-hmm. because he brings so much of um it's just like it's a comfortable conversation. Yeah, talks to so f- anybody about anything. Yeah. yeah. So for you to f- it's like the host's job to make you be the best version of yourself, I think. Mm-hmm. You know, so no matter what way you come in, there's always a way of like me or you or Joe, you know, whoever is being the host to kind of start to shift that, that, that set or setting yeah. to kind of be like, okay, we can pull something out of this. Like everybody's interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like yeah, most of us don't talk that. about anything interesting. And at that's any point. the truth. That's the truth. And this is why I have this cup here. I mean, some people may think like, okay, he's being a fanboy, but to me, he opened up the doors to just this different place that we weren't before Mm -hmm. you know he's to me the person that opened up this podcast possibility Mm. and through him not even through his words maybe through his guests or just the conversations i understood about kundalini yoga i mean joe's never done it but the conversation came up yeah and then the jujitsu and then so it was this Mm -hmm. connection of mind body and spirit so it's like i have to pay homage to the guy that did so much for me indirectly and in my dreams and my hopes is for me to possibly be able to do that for people one day. I mean, that's one of the greatest things you could do. Yeah. Well, you're, you're doing it now. It's at a smaller scale than what his is because his is, you know, humongous. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's a really important thing to realize is like if you're helping anybody 
that's great. You know, like if you have a tribe of five people that mm. you're helping, that's you're truly making their lives better, that's fucking awesome. Mm. Like that's tremendous. You know, if you have a tribe of a hundred people, that's great. We love those messages. You know, if you have a tribe yeah. of five thousand people, it's like, whoa, that's like a big tribe. I'm charge them ten dollars. You a know, month. Yeah, yeah, or whatever, or you know, we just <laughs> just provide huge value for I'm those playing. for those people, and then what that does is they end up telling their friends, mm-hmm. you know, and that ends up that ends up spinning out. But I think too often people can become, you know, kind of like disappointed mm-hmm. or bummed on themselves that it's like, oh man, I don't have you know, a million people on my freaking Instagram or whatever. It's like, if you have that idea, you probably you will never get to that point yeah, where you're really it. helping the ones that we, Yeah, like some of the, the most like fulfilling, satisfying messages are from people who, you know, send us a message and say like, you know, we had an impact on their lives. Yeah, it's they just, huge. We always like, talk about it and we send them to each other, you know. Well, that's, and that's the thing. It's like, if I'm not interested in the person, I really don't want to have them on the show. And we did that a few times and it just doesn't work, man. Mm. No. I'm not yeah. interested in you like, you know, it just doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, it's no good, and maybe it just doesn't work right then. You know, maybe everybody yeah, in the absolutely. room wasn't it wasn't the right recipe at that moment. Mm, right. You know, but maybe in six months, maybe things ferment a little bit, and all of a sudden it starts to. What ma- What made you answer yes better. to us? Because I mean, you know. <clears throat> oh, for one thing, um, it's well, I checked out. I checked out you. I think on the mm-hmm. on the grams, it seemed mm-hmm. like you're doing interesting stuff. Yeah. Um, and the way that you approached me was it was like chill. It was cool. Yeah. Um, you guys are close by. There's a lot of like good like check check check. Nice. Worst case scenario, I meet some you know. You know like Fish weirdos friend. down the street and I'm like oh okay that was that oh, was yeah. that was that was weird so these Persian <laughs> fucks yeah <laughs> well like that was that was strange yeah uh see, see now you see how I can't go back to where we were yeah yeah, yeah. where were we we were on the polyamory uh, conversation no so the, the, how it started was so the segue was what you didn't have sex for a while and you really loved it. Oh. And then we started talking about how it's good to have a lot yeah, of sex. Yeah, so I used to be a premature ejaculator. Sorry, sorry, ex-girlfriend of, of, <laughs> of a while. How long? Um, we were together for like three years. Oh, she was the real victim. Yeah, she was the victim. I'm really, I feel really bad about that. That was just such What's, a bummer. What, what do you consider premature ejaculation? <laughs> I wasn't Look too at the bad. nervousness and the stutter. It wasn't too bad. In that bad. realm. <laughs> it uh, bro, you know not, to, not even come at me with that kind of shit, bro. <laughs> no, so my, ish, my issue with it was whenever she I would get close to, to orgasming, uh, I'd get so hot oh, bothered by yeah, it. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't, no, no, no. Uh, and it was yeah. tough. And I think, again, that's like a chemistry thing as well. But then the pressure ends up building up and for a while i was really good with it then all of a sudden mm-hmm. something switched and i think it was like anxiety mm-hmm. i don't know exactly how to label what it was but i yeah. was like there was this newfound pressure which ended up that pressure manifesting itself in the head of my cock <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, was, and you just had to let it go you know? <laughs> <laughs> have to release so when you said that i thought that you're talking about like by um i don't know by practicing abstinence you were kind of like evolving as a human being but all you were talking about is to get your boner back that's right ah yeah nice. no not get my boner back no no the, the abstinence <laughs> yeah i mean whatever 10 yeah tame tame the boner tame the boner yeah it was too much yeah, yeah. Right. but that's a part you I mean that's like being a that's young guy that's a good guy. name for a book yeah how exactly. to get your boner back yeah, yeah. Your get, your, get, your, get your boner back <laughs> <laughs> you should change the name of the podcast <laughs> how get, much are you hoping your book get to your sell boner back. Boner land. how much like, how many, like how, many copies? how many copies better be a lot what does that mean uh, I mean my intentions are for it to it to be huge my intentions are for it to type. impact yeah but so what does it mean absolutely in the book 100% can um, you go platinum with that dog yeah for sure like 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 on the New York Times list you know is definitely like that's the highest goal right now for are, sure. Are you going to be on the cover or like you're going to like do an pose? Like how's it going to look? I'll probably, depends if we call it, get your boner back. That would probably, <laughs> that would probably, cha- that would probably change, <laughs> change the, uh, the good. cover. No, but do you know uh, the cover already? Can you picture it or you haven't? No, I can't yet? picture it yet to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not exactly sure what the cover first should book. be. This will be, yeah, first time, first time author. I've done a lot of writing for, for different like magazines and mm-hmm. blogs and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Quite a man. Um, but yeah, this will be the first like real, it's a real thing. We got nice. like a, you know, it's 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 a cool thing to have a you know, like New York. That's like the engine of all that mm. stuff, and to have you know really serious people investing, you know, like invest in real money into a project that I'm doing. Did you it's approach really them or feeling. they approached you? So the way it works is you get the agent, 
and then the agent shops and then you create this proposal proposal is about a 70 page like mini book it's like oh, a wow. novella yeah. um which is a business plan essentially is what it is That's right. so it's a summary of the book and then um it's the you know it's the plan how are we going to sell this what are your connections mm -hmm. what are you know like what are the resources that you have to, to get this thing out there you make this super you know little 70 page proposal that's got to be fire, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, and then you get your posse, your agents. They reach out to all the people who they already have great relationships with, mm -hmm. hopefully. And then you go and do meetings if they like you. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people. So when many they... ifs and buts. And... Oh, yeah, yeah, man. There's yeah. so many ifs and buts. Mm -hmm. It's a super bumpy road, you know, and it's just like anything. You know, it's like yeah. any time it could be like, oh, that didn't work out. You know, and then it's like and it, and it might not work out because it's not time. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the best ideas they didn't work out, but they'd be fire in five years. Yeah, yeah. They didn't come at the right time. Yeah. You were ahead of your time, basically. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what, that's what, um, yeah, publishers think. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll see how the book does. You know, I don't know. I, I have no. What is it called again? Align Method is what we're calling align it as method. of now. The Align okay. Method, yeah. Okay. So it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a movement challenge. And, and then I probably shouldn't actually talk too much about it, but it's, it's going to be great. Cool, cool. Yeah. So Align Podcast, Align Movement. If, if you want people to like check out the show, what would be one episode for them to definitely check out and for Ooh. them to like get hooked? Man, it totally depends. I, like I said, like I don't Depending put their it. Interest. So I've, I've, um, there's been a lot of episodes, not like a lot, a lot, but, a, but a, a, a strong hearty handful of episodes that I haven't released. Um, because sometimes too much time will pass and it'll be like my thing. Like, I don't feel like I presented well in that. And I'm like, ah, oh, we can't do that. Um, usually it's because time passes. So I have like 20 episodes in the can, uh -huh. um, almost always. Oh, whoa. Nice. So I just, listening. I like that. so I just record, <laughs> I just record whenever I feel like it. Like I don't, I don't do a, a podcast with my cousin or something like that yeah. because like, oh shit, we got it. Monday's coming. Yeah. yeah. What know, if so, your cousin starts doing really good? She's <laughs> Selma, you're coming on. <laughs> no, I don't have a cousin. So. Here's the script. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So it's, uh, I only record with somebody because I genuinely want to connect with that that's person. Good. I genuinely yeah. want to have a conversation. Um, and so I think that's, I don't think, I know it that's why, across. that's why the, the quality stays. It comes across I've, nev sure. I've never for over three years needed to do a podcast. It's always been like, oh, sick, let's do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you, have you ever done an episode where you noticed at the end it didn't record? Yeah, yeah, I have. I you have done that before. Me, bro. I'm looking I at the camera. Yeah, I'm like, wait. Imagine yeah, if no, you I have sent done me done a that text before. and this was my way of telling him we didn't record. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have, I have oh, done that before. That's yeah, that's us. Yeah, I've had, I've had that before. It's not, it's not what you want to do. Yeah. It's only one time. I don't remember who it was, but yeah, it happened. Right. We was recording. No, it was recording. This was, in, this is, I was recording it onto my computer and I didn't have enough space. And so it didn't it didn't record any of it. That's so I got to the end of it. If I would have like stopped the conversation like five minutes before, it probably yeah. would have gotten the whole thing. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but it was like, sorry, not enough space. It's just like <coughs> cut, cut the whole thing. I yeah, I think that's what happened. I that's horrible. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I maybe I'm making that up, but I'm pretty sure that's what happened. But yeah, yeah it's happened before. Early I, on I had to re-record later. Early on. Yeah, now I've, I cover my bases more, but yeah, shit like that happens. You yeah. know? And whenever stuff like that does happen, I I really do see it as being like a blessing of some Not sort. Not meant to be. Yeah, like, sort. oh, fuck, we'll do such a better conversation next time. Yeah. You know? And if the person doesn't want to do a conversation again because they're like pissed off, then it's like, well, it wasn't supposed to happen. It's mm. totally great. Where do you see yourself in 10 years from now? Mm. Uh, mm. Let's see. Well, I would expect the world as a whole to be really excited about a couple things. One, I think people are going to start sitting on the floor real soon. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's going to become that. a normal thing where people are, people are going to see yeah. how chairs are, are like a real pain in the ass. That's like a pun, I guess. I wasn't intentional. You know, but it's like a real problem that we don't go through any lower range of motion of squatting. Our whole life is stuck in this one static state. Mm -hmm. Stand up from a chair, back down into a chair. Um, in the next, I think, two years, um, that's going to be dramatically different you use uh, a squatty potty no i squat up on the toilet mm. yeah i actually perch up on there like a baby bird and get up on top so that's how i roll with it okay. you know and that's a really important that's a really important thing because as you're doing that you're going through that full range of motion it's almost like you're plunging your organs that's right. you know, so your pelvic floor your respiratory diaphragm all these different diaphragm just means a horizontal you know a little layer of tissue in your body mm -hmm. they kind of start you start to almost like plunge them or move them yeah. up and down 
your closed hydraulic system, you move those any of those diaphragms, it moves all the diaphragms. Mm -hmm. So when you go through that full range of motion with your pelvis and your breath and you know respiratory you know diaphragm like breathe through your diaphragm, it's literally moving the fluid through your whole entire yeah. body. So if you're only going through a half range of motion all the time and you're sick, I mean I I know that there's at least at least a big part of the conversation is movement oriented. Mm. But know, back so, to, wow. back to. so that's so that's what I, that's what I'm really excited about is is really seeing impact of ideas like that uh -huh. starting to to really start to penetrate earth like modernity. Um, mm -hmm. So in ten years, I think probably there will be um, at least three books or so. Three feels th feels pretty good. Um, Why haven't you done a TED talk yet? Are you? Yeah, this year we're going to do one gonna for do sure. One yeah, I haven't. It nice. has been something that I've been like over overactive about. But yeah, this year we're definitely that's you, that's you on, on, the, on the on the agenda. Okay. No, it's it's so one of my one of my buddies he like sets that stuff up. That's like his job is to help mm. people with their TED talks and whatnot. Mm. So yeah, that's on on the the docket for likely 2019. But I haven't actually like filled out the things yet, so it might be might be. Mm. So give us some recommendations, things that we should definitely do and utilize as tools to optimize ourselves before. Nose breathe. That's a big one. Okay. Yeah, super simple stuff. So the stuff that I'm more enamored with is stuff that people, it's like you don't need to do anything. You don't need to buy anything. The practical mm. shit. Yeah. Mm. You know, so just breathe through your nose. You know, it's a super simple That's thing. That's where like anxiety comes from when we don't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so your nose holes are smaller, right? So that's that that narrower passage causes you to use more muscles. So mm -hmm. use use your your diaphragm, diaphragm. like we we're talking mm -hmm. about, right? So you're starting to get that belly breath. You're starting to, you know, it calms your whole nervous system down. When you're breathing in through the mouth, you end up being a bit more of a mm -hmm. chest breather, right? That ends up sending the the stimulus that you're startled, right? So when you need to get out of a room, mm -hmm. your breath will come up into your chest yeah. a bit. Mm -hmm. Right, so we're all these systems are integrated systems. So something as simple as breathing through your nose, it also causes your body to release more nitric oxide, uh -huh. which is good. It's a vasodilator, good for circulation. You know, there's there's a long, long laundry list of, of things that breathe through the nose. Breathe, is by good. the way, yeah, 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 right, exactly. It's funny how we we forget. Yeah, babies are are great swimmers too. You know, we like we come out of the water. You know, it's like mm -hmm. your body, the the oldest. I was just reading this thing. Sea squirts are the oldest vertebrate creatures from mm. 500 million years ago um and they're in the freaking ocean it's a sea squirt mm -hmm. you know like our spines the evolution of our of our spine comes from the ocean you yeah. know and we're 70 percent water and our mm -hmm. spines wrapped around this this cerebral spinal fluid mm -hmm. stuff like we're floating we're floating yeah. water bags that's interesting you mm -hmm. know so yeah, true. so we need to embrace more of that like that fluid quality of ourselves you know, like in the ocean, the ocean moves, man. It, like people need to follow that. They need to just move. So like dancing and sexuality and all that. It's fucking important. Like water like activities. I mean, sports in general. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. Really good. Get, I love it. I mean, it feels so relaxed after. That's usually when I have the best sleep. Well, water swimming. becomes a coach. Mm -hmm. You know, when you get in the ocean, it's literally, it's like, what is a gymnastic coach if they're trying to teach you to do a whatever, you know, somersault, whatever, they're going to put their hands in your body and they're going to move your hips this way and they're going to pick you up and they're going to say, no, move your arm over here a little bit, right? So that's like, a, okay, cool, sweet, human coach, got it, moving my arm, right? You go into the ocean, it's literally moving mm -hmm. your arm, it's yeah. moving your hips. Yeah. You know, so you can see all these different environmental coaches, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what I was saying before with like the, the psychedelic stuff. You know, each mm. plant is a coach, right? Each food that you eat is a coach. They all have different lessons. Mm -hmm. You know, tobacco is a coach. You know, or everything in life in general. Fucking everything. everything. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, so breathing through the nose. Yeah. Well, one. I mean, the stuff that they're in the book is the is the fundamental. So, <laughs> so breathing through the nose, yeah. uh, sitting on the floor. You got to fucking sit on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. So cultures that sit on the floor. This is like examples are like Northern Africa and uh, Eastern Mediterranean, Northeast or Southeast Asia. They have significantly less, like almost zero incidence of hip disease. You know, mm -hmm. so osteoarthritis and like issues around their hips is like, yeah, we don't we don't think about that stuff because we're going through a full range of motion, mm -hmm. and your body's not just built. To, it's not like you, you got like punked by having a body. <laughs> you know, your body's like it wants to do well for you. Yeah. You just don't give it fucking any of the information that it needs. Yeah. You know, but if you fill those pages up with good information, it's like totally got it. Thanks, bud. Mm. Adapting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but it need, but it needs those opportunities to adapt. Mm-hmm. So when you just bring your life to the floor, it's free. <laughs> you know, yeah. you don't have to buy a hydraulic freaking table that goes up and down. It's like completely free. Get yeah. a cushion for your ass. Put your laptop on your chair that you already have. I prefer to sit on the floor, dude. Yeah. Well, it's it's a more it's a more youthful decision. Yeah. Any kid, you put them on a chair and they'll kind of maybe like sit on it like, a, you know, they'd sit on it like they're sitting on the floor or they'll mm. climb on it, yeah. you know, and then they're up on the table yeah. and then they're sitting on the table like they're on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like that's, that's your humanity. That's where you come from. Mm. You know, so if you want to be more youthful, you need to fucking move your body like a youthful person. Mm. Uh, yeah. So floor is a big one. Start bringing your nose on the floor. You'll, it's huge. Hang, hang regularly. That's how I fix my shoulder. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's a whole yeah. book about it. Yeah. It's called Shoulder Pain. Yeah, it, just, it puts, puts things back in place, right? And posture, bad posture creates like shoulder stretches. Pain too. Yeah. Like that's yeah. the reason I sit, like try to sit like good because I realized by sitting like that, my shoulder was pretty much having these little. Pain yeah, well, it has no and, it has no foundation of support. Right, and so it the hits compensation the side, that right? manifests, yeah, mm-hmm. the com- compensation that manifests up in your shoulder it's not coming from your shoulder right you know it's coming from your foot your knee your pelvis uh-huh. your spine now all of a sudden the shoulder is hunched forward right but it's like there's no such thing as one part of your body existing in a vacuum okay mm. right so it's just compensations yeah you know so if your head i know this is kind of getting a little bit like nebulous that i'm speaking about it but so example when you're f- hunched forward with your with your spine, mm. right? Hyperkyphosis. Your shoulders are rolled forward. Now your head, it's called the writing reflex. Your eyes always want to be looking up in the horizon, mm-hmm. right? So to do that, you were going to crunch your spine back, right? So now all of a sudden, I'm trying to do it with the mic. So I'll just move the mic. So now all of a sudden, you're crunching your spine back like it's this. Be a cover picture of the episode. Go oh, ahead. perfect. <laughs> so now all of a sudden, you're, you're hunching your spine back right. like this, right? Because you're trying to write that horizon you want to look straight Uh so now you have a sore neck right so is your sore neck because you just have a shitty neck or Uh is your neck sore because it's a shitty neck or is it sore because you're hunched over all day long and your neck's trying its best to correct and help you yeah so your neck's trying to serve you right so like a fun little little like meme you could say is like the how's it go the thief doesn't usually cry out you know or no yeah, the thief doesn't cry. The victim is the one that cries. Mm-hmm. You know, so in our body, we have these victims that are crying and wigging out. Uh, but meanwhile, they're usually not the issue. That was a perfect way of putting it. Thank you for that, man. Yeah, of course. I it. <laughs> got that you, man. Lot, man. I got you're you, dog. Pretty good at this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're good, man. <laughs> um, We're in this together. Air, Navid, where are we at the time? Hour 45. Hour Whoa. Damn. That's a lot. We went in. Do you have anything else? No, I think we pretty much covered. Do you have anything else, my brother? No. Uh, People can, I I have a five day movement challenge that people can start. Okay. Yeah, if they're curious about some of this stuff. I mean, it's normally in my like, actually like working world. I don't talk about drugs Mm -hmm. and all that stuff nearly as much. So Uh um, I actually do have some some, uh, content in relation to movement and how to move better. Okay. So if people have interest in learning some of these fundamentals that everybody needs, mm-hmm. um, it's at alinetherapy.com. Oh, you can jump on there. Yeah, it's a great website, by the way. Thanks, man. And when you get the book, like, send us one so we could put it somewhere around here. So oh, for sure, man. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get you, I'll get yeah, you, I'll yeah. get you a, a galley. No, we got to have him back so he can talk about the book. Yeah, yeah. man, I'd love Obviously to. we're going to share your that'd website. Really, that'd be really exciting. All right, well, let me do my website, Instagram. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Align Podcast is the Instagram. That's my most active thing. Pop it up. Pop it up. So, I know it doesn't make you comfortable, man. I just want to thank you again for coming on the show, man. Yeah. Love you for coming in. Thank you, brother. Love you for what you're doing, ah, brother. Thanks. And uh, I hope to see you doing a lot bigger love, things because I know you will. So keep doing what you're doing, man, and spread that love. love, love. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. All right. Hashtag man. love. Boom. Thanks, everybody. Make sure to subscribe. 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 Oh, subscribe. See y'all. Nomad out. Thank you.